This is how we harvest meat from a beaver. So we take steaks and we take roasts from every beaver that we catch. Uh, Joey's locked right in because he gets snacks from it as well. It's also one of the main parts of his diet. So you'll see the animal, the parts of the animal that we don't necessarily eat go in a bowl for him for his dinners for the rest of the year. So first, a sharp fillet knife, different gloves than you scum the beaver with, different, you know, the first shed's not clean. It's just the, the fact of the, major, of, of the nature of the fact. So we do little things to try and make it as sanitary as possible. Different gloves, different knife. You know, we try to separate the thing that's going to come into our house from the, from the actual bench. So today we're going to be taking, oh yeah, Joey, Joey's going to get his treat. Today we're <laughs> going to be taking steaks and roasts. So we'll probably come around here. So we take back straps, sirloin as steaks, and then we take the two legs as roasts. So we're starting with the back straps. So we're going to come down the spine on each side. This area of the tail, we're not going to end up using for us. Joey will get that, but we're going to. So we just start kind of midway top of the tail. Come right down the side of the back strap. Both sides. Then I'm going to come in behind. How far down are you cutting? I'm going as far as I can. And that's why I'm always sharpening this blade. This blade is for taking meat off beavers. I don't use this to finish trim because you're jamming it into bone. It's just the nature of it. So this is my boning knife. So then I'm going to come behind the shoulder blades. Separate that. This is just, you're going to get into the top of your back strap there. Joey always gets the top of the shoulder blade. <clears throat> so... I'm now gonna come in along that and I'm gonna turn my knife. You know, we're going along the ribs. So we've come down the spine. Now we're gonna scoop and go along the ribs this way. So you'll see I'm really bending that knife. This is why we use a filleting knife. Just hugging those ribs. The weight of my blade is going into the ribs. Bottom part comes out really easy between where the rib cage ends, where the sirloin starts, is a big chunk of backstrap. But this right here is your guts. Stay away from that. This whole thing that we're doing is a gutless method, and that's because we want to avoid the area of the beaver that harv you know, that has GRD and some of those other parasites. So once we get to that area, we're coming down. I'm coming in, but I'm turning my blade and I'm following this last rib that I can. And I'm going just a little ways. Cutting through. Get the first part of the back strap out. And then I'm using that to help guide me. And I'm using the weight of the beaver to kind of work against. <clears throat> this white piece of fat here is your buffer between this and the intestines. You'll see it on almost every beaver. I left a little bit of meat. That's okay. It's better to leave a little bit of meat than get into the intestines. So now we're coming into our sirloin. So the back strap is essentially, we can cut a little bit more. The back strap is essentially off. You could cut this off right here. This is your back strap. Moving into the sirloin, we're coming down again till you hit bone, and then I'm peeling it out. Now the difference with the back strap is that the top of that hip bone is in here. So we want to find that and work around it. So I'm using just the tip, and I can feel, boom. Okay, there's the bone. You can start to see it. So I'm going to come on the other side of that. Now I'm going in and I'm using the shape of that bone. To come around and again, avoiding the intestines, scooping it out. Now I come across the top and you can see it's, it's separating for us. It's showing us where it wants to go. There's a pin bone up here. I'm going to cut just around the tip of that. Boom, there it pops out. So that's gonna be your sirloin. We'll show how to trim these pieces up as well. But that's your back strap, that's your sirloin. So it's not a huge piece of meat. You know, it's it's this big when it's all said and done. This top piece will come out. But that is the, Joey's locked right in. That is the most tender piece of a beaver. And it's why we include it in our steaks and not in our roasts. So put that in your clean space that you have set off to the side. Joey needs another treat. 
<laughs> All right, so now this side, I'm right-handed. So that was the easy side because this is my right hand. So now I'm going the opposite though. So I'm gonna be peeling and cutting. I like to, again, because I'm right-handed, I'll just come right into my ribs here. Get this piece off. Joey can't believe I threw that away. See, I found my ribs. I'm gonna come back towards the spine now. So I'm just working backwards. So there's your back strap. Now I'm coming around the other side. Again, this is the piece where the back, you know, a good chunk of the back strap dips down, but you wanna be careful not to get into your intestines. Okay, back straps off. Now we gotta go for the sirloin. Again, being right-handed, this sirloin sometimes gets a little, little tricky, but same deal. Finding that hip bone, coming in, putting the pressure against the hip bone, and using it to guide us out. So I'm gonna try to, trying to keep the angles right for everyone. So I'm coming in, you know, the hip bone's right here. Again, I've left a little bit of meat, but that's just my working backwards here. You can see where this muscle group is. We're gonna come around that pin bone. And so, you know, this right here is your sirloin itself. This is that cap. And that's why when I was saying, as we were skinning, if you watched our skinning video, that this portion, it's okay to a little bit comes off. It's not the end of the world. So there we have that sirloin's a little bit, a little bit more marred up. Again, that's just my my right hand working backwards. But there's your back strap and your sirloin. So we've got those two. Those around. I like to keep. You know, we're gonna trim this off, so I like to keep that part exposed. Next, before we move up to the legs, I'm gonna hack off, and it is, I'm, I mean, it's hacking. I'm not gonna try to make this pretty. But I'm hacking off some pieces for Joey. So we feed our dog beaver meat year round. We freeze them in muffin tins. <clears throat> and a muffin tin is a serving size for him. So dinner every night, he gets a muffin. As far as the dog's concerned, I'm not gonna speak to, you know, I'm not a vet. I don't know dog. Uh, diets at a scientific level, so I'm not going to give recommendations, but I will say we feed our dog raw beaver meat, we avoid blood, you know, like actual blood in the meat, and we avoid the lymph node system, which I will show you, I mean, that's kind of a, and these big balls of fat that the beavers have, you will find nodes, there's one right there I just cut in half. So that is part of the animal's just big circulatory system, whole body circulatory system. And so if there's any nasty in the animal, it's gonna be in there, we just avoid it. So taking a little bit of meat off of there, take some off the front legs. And Joey gets a snack, easy. Funny. He doesn't beg at the dinner table, but he begs in, begs in the first shed. <clears throat> okay, got some of the big chunks off that. Next, we're going to come to the legs. And so I trig up that leg so it's ready, but... So before it was just below the foot. Right. And you know what? We're actually... Pop that... Oh, sorry. Pop that right out. So the first thing that I do with my sharp knife is I come around... So the tail and the leg itself are gonna be separated. And you'll feel right here, there's a bone. So the side of your hip bone. So you're just gonna follow that down. It's gonna tell you where it wants to go. This right here is danger zone. This is the caster, this is the oil. You cannot cut those. If you, if you cut them, it's game over. If you see right there, that's the gland itself. If you cut into that and you see stuff come out, you're, you're done. Do, do not cook that animal. I mean, it's either that or you're, 
going to go through a lot. You'll really spend the time cleaning it up because that's that will absolutely ruin your, your beaver roast. So at the same time, we have that very, very thin belly membrane here. So you just you just got to be careful. You know, that that right there is the backside of the belly membrane. So we're following that meat along that bone and boom, here's your, you know, your hip sockets in here. So we're eventually coming for the hip socket. I'm going to trim some of this fat off. Trying very carefully not to get, I mean, right there, that right there, you cut that, you're in the intestines. So I'm almost ready to pop this, but before I do that, I'm going to take off the foot. And I'm going to take off the foot because when you vacuum seal, if you cut this with your sawzall, we learned this the hard way. When you vacuum seal it, that sharp edge is going to pop the vacuum seal back. So right underneath, right where the skin that you left meets the body, we're going to cut it straight down, come to the other side. And you can feel, I mean, just feel that joint. And it'll start to show itself. Right, you gotta cut it all the way around. And that's that joint you're looking for right there. So you get it close and you should be able to pop it. Now that's at least a clean break and when you vacuum seal the animal, that will be solid. All right, well, it won't split your bag open. So now I'm gonna store my knife there while I work feeling i'm twisting it i'm feeling where that joint is <clears throat> coming in now inside what i just did there that ball goes inside that socket and inside there's a piece of connective tissue inside so pre downward pressure and i'm cutting that you know between that ball and that socket is a very thick thick membrane I'm cutting that so now I've got it all separated. I'm just cutting down through that meat. Again, I'm putting my fingers right here so that it's not, you know, that is, that's no-no zone, that's no-no zone. I would la rather leave a little bit of meat up in here than cut either of those. So that right there is a beaver ham. And that's that back leg of a beaver. There's probably in that one leg, there's probably a pound of meat. Uh, usually when we are done with these, you know, we'll, so we'll clean them all up, we'll trim them all up, we'll show you that. But then we, when we vacuum seal them, a pair of legs together is usually about three pounds. Put that in there. Now we're going to come to the other side. Before I do that, I'm going to take some meat off of the tail. And this again is for Joey. Now, if you were to prep a whole beaver, you know, if you wanted to eat an entire beaver, it's pieces that we're taking off for the dog. And I don't say that in a light way. I mean, this is good meat. We, we consider this to be, you know, good fare for the dog. Um, this would be your grind or your stew meat or stuff of that nature. And I'm doing this first because the next step of this process, and I'm just, again, coming down to the rib, kind of coming back. Next step of this process, this carcass is going to fall to the floor. And so I just want to be done taking meat when it falls to the floor. And taking that tail meat off. Don't want to cut into my nice roast. So. Okay, so now you have gravity on your, on your side. Now I'm coming just off that tail and I'm looking for the hip bone. And I, I know I'm on the other side of it because it sits up in here a little bit. Again, avoid this, caster, oil, stomach, all no, no. If you want, you can use your knife to kind of start to see where those, where that separation is. You know, there's that belly, it's falling away. You do not want to cut that. If you cut that, just be, just be super cautious of what is touching it. You know, if you make a mistake and this gets sliced, but all the intestines are sitting down here, you know, you can work around real, real carefully, but, um, just 
that is that, that's your big risk for getting any of the you know the classic diseases that people associate with beaver or giardia tularemia that's where it lives so what i just did was i came around that's the top of that pelvis bone i met it from this side came around the top side i'm going to follow that down i'm going to come from this side kind of clean this up a little bit what i'm doing is i'm just getting to a point where i can see that joint see that joint starting to show right there and once i come in and i cut that it's gonna fall so again got your bucket goes right into the bucket and the last part this is what i started to do on that last one but because you still got to get this foot off now i'm holding this to pop the foot off And that joint is always higher than I think it is, but there it is. There's that joint. And for this knife, I mean, this is a thick bladed knife that I, I don't care about. That's why I'm jamming it in there. So that is your second ham. So those two together <clears throat> make quite the, uh, quite the meal. So what we end up with when we, when we take meat from a beaver, we end up with about three pounds of stuff that can be used for either grind or roast or stew meat and then we we get about a pound to a pound and a half of backstrap from each animal so that is how we take meat from a beaver